What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number five of our UAB Blazers Dynasty. We're taking on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in today's matchup. Guys, we are under 500 currently, and Western Kentucky is over 500, so this might be a good bar test to see, are we actually just kind of hitting a little bit of a skid in the early going, in early spring, or actually are we better than these lesser tiered type of programs? This is a C- minus program in Western Kentucky in this MVP Baseball 06. So we see Kelly Tangan getting a base hit there, a little swinging bunt style. He's going to end up trying to steal. And unfortunately, even with Tangan's speed, he's not going to get in there safely as catcher's got a gun. Apparently, he's going to throw him out. Doug Hyde up. He's going to strike out on a cut fastball. It's a pretty good one. A little change-up piece to Josh Austin. Going to line out to shortstop. So three up, three down. Christian Klump getting the start out at second base. And other than that, that's pretty much that's pretty much everybody that's new into the starting lineup except for catcher. we got Namol Mashvi going to be starting here at catcher today, not Chase Davis. So we see that Noah Thurston's on the mound. He actually does a good job there to get three up and three down in that inning. And take a look at Caden Holt, guys. Home run to the opposite field. I like it. I like it. He's our first baseman. He's hitting 313. Already one for one today with that home run, 387 foot shot. And I like it. I like that he has found his power stroke, guys. He's looking pretty good right now. Hopefully, we can keep that up. Here is Sam Morgan, our DH. He's going to get a base hit right back up the middle. And we've got a runner on now in the top of the second with two down. Here is Mashfee. Going to hit a ground ball to first base, and what a play! Right there, he, I think he disoriented himself a little bit. He forgot where first base was. He's like, uh, what? Where is it at? But, guys, a little bit about uh, Noah Thurston here. He was actually listed, for whatever reason, as inactive. He was on our 25-man roster, and somehow he was listed as inactive. I don't know what's up with that, but he's getting the start today. This is his first start of the season. And look at Hyde throwing from left field. Clump with the tag. Oh, what a throw. And even probably even better tag, guys. Wow, so the crow hop, the strike over to second base. Dang, so Dougie and Christian Klump going to come together and make that second out of the inning. There's the third out as Josh Austin makes a nice play. So UAB still holding on to that one nothing lead here, and here's a line drive. Oh, right off the wall to left field. It's going to get all the way to about left center field off the rebound there. And we've got a runner already on second base in scoring position. Jay Balmer comes up, line drive out to center field. Unfortunately, his batting average is starting to dip, and I think it's it's kind of unfortunate because he's hitting line drives right at people like constantly. But we see Christian Klump coming up. He's having himself a big game right now, guys. He got a got a tag at second base with that runner trying to move over from Hyde's throw, and then we get a double play ball that he was able to turn off the movement towards the bag that was well-timed. Makes a solid throw at a first. He had that RBI single you guys saw a little few, a few innings ago, a few plays ago, and then Mashfee going to double this up and get himself a solo shot. So both Holt and Mashfee have home runs in today's action, and he's now up to 333, one for two, home run and a ribby. That, that one got out, man. That was a 413-foot shot. Here's a base hit by Reggie Garcia, our shortstop. And the offense, guys. The offense is coming through. Kelly Tangan going to go opposite field, and he's going to go into the right center field gap. That's going to score Garcia. Tangan rounding second, going to decide to stop a little bit short. I feel like he would have made it because that throw was offline. But manager is going to come out, talk to pitcher number 225, and, oh, I thought we were going to get a base hit for Josh Austin. But, unfortunately, he doesn't get it. And he's another guy that's struggling right now, guys, with hitting baseballs right at people, line drives right back at guys. So, you know, I mean, I guess you take it. You take it. You deal with it. But it still sucks because him and Jay Ballmer are good players, and it's unfortunate to see them kind of go through a little bit of a slump here. Thurston gets that strikeout to end that inning. And then, finally, Jay Ballmer gets a base hit. A little bit of luck there. Right fielder can't handle it, can't get in quickly enough. But we see Ballmer was already on the move as this ground ball gets over to second base, makes the play. And uh-oh, Sam Morgan 
Going to get a base hit to right field, and guess who's going to score? Jay Ballmer is going to come in and score. Mashfi up. He's going to strike out Sam Morgan. We had a hit and run going, and Mashfi just missed the sign. He missed the sign. This is why he's a backup right now, guys. He, d he does not have the wherewithal of a starting pitcher. So Thurston goes five innings, pitched very well against this Western Kentucky team as a freshman. I would say that's pretty decent. At any freshman in the collegiate level, you know, if you're pitching like that, giving up a shutout in five innings, I'd say that that's a really good performance for your first outing. James Monroe, our best overall relief pitcher, is going to come on out in the sixth inning and kind of got a little bit of a shaky start there. I mean, we got a base hit. Holt couldn't, couldn't play it correctly, but we're going to get out of that inning. Let's go to the top of the seventh. Doug Hyde up, gets a base hit over here to left field. So now we got ourselves back here starting Starting off in a good position here. Here's Josh Austin. He's going to lift a little fly ball out to left field, but shortstop's going to come out and handle this one. So Josh Austin still, still struggling with the bat. Here's a base hit right back up the middle. James Monroe had already given up a base hit to the runner on second base now. He was on first with a single. So it's back to back singles here with nobody down. One and two count here. Here's a guy that's throwing 100 miles an hour with fastballs, and guys are just timing him up. So Hyde coming in, making a strong throw from left to home on one hop. Halts the runners from moving over. Manager's not too happy with James Monroe here. He's trying to pound fastballs past these guys and not use his off-speed stuff. But we can see he used that high and inside fastball. 100 miles an hour, hitting triple digits. Going to get that strike two call. Let's see what he's going to throw here. He's going to go with the fastball again, but somehow... But look at this! Holt! He, he, what? What? He caught it. Oh, wait. It hit the ground first. Look at this. Holt, for whatever reason, thought it was a pop-up, and the run's going to score. Oh, it's 5-1 to one now. Base is juiced, and James Monroe now strikes out two batters in a row until this guy comes up, gets a base hit, Tangin, throwing over to home. That's two runs given up by James Monroe now. We're probably facing off their best hitter right here and right now. And that slide piece on the inside part of the plate is going to strike this batter out. So James Monroe does a job. He pitched two and two-thirds of innings. I like it. He did a good job for us. But now we're going to go and turn it over to our regular closer, Tanner Winery, who's actually going to give up a base hit right here. Not a good start for him. we got nobody down. Tangan coming on in. He's going to make this catch. His runners will have to stay put. Almost got him out there, almost with, with that strong throw there. 0-2 oh, count, a two-seam fastball running way inside. And I like that long, stretchy type of delivery he's got. It really throws people off. And then that circle change, 79 miles an hour, low and inside, and a strikeout. And guys, we are going to get this W. UAB tops the Hilltoppers in game number one of this three-game series. Win 5-2, to two. both teams had 12 hits. We just capitalized on our hitting chances and our runners in scoring position versus what they did. Western Kentucky had an opportunity with that bases loaded situation uh, three times. Three times. They had three outs to work with with bases loaded. They could only scratch across two runs. It is what it is. You know, it, This game could have totally turned in a different direction had James Monroe not locked it down. So James Monroe gave up seven hits in two and two-thirds innings. But honestly, guys, I'm just happy that he kept his control. He kept his wits about him a little bit. I know he had that negative reaction when the coach came out. But, you know, he buckled down, got the job done, and we got the W. It could have gotten really ugly really fast. We got the W in the second game of the series, 14-10. to We're now going to move into gameplay with the third game of the series. And we noticed some little bit of changes here because Reggie Garcia is going to get the leadoff assignment here today. And... We've got Sam Morgan playing first base. Hyde going to strike out high and inside. And Josh Austin gets a base hit in that 5.5 hole to move the runners. we got a situation at first and second now. Jay Ballmer coming up. Going to ground out to second base, who makes the off-balance throw. Gets the out at second base, but Jay Ballmer is going to be safe at first. Kingston comes up, gets a base knock. That's an RBI single. And, guys, UAB is up again early against the Hilltoppers. one nothing here. And here is... Oh, Sam Morgan, guys, is killing it. He's killing it right now. I love this guy. He's such a good hitter for us. That's a two-RBI double. 
UAB is now up 3-0. Here's Chase Davis, our regular catcher. He's going to ground out to first base as long as he can make that play. He does a little bit of a bobble, but he takes care of it, and all is well and good for that inning as we go up 3 Zippo. Ian Brown going to be taking the mound here in today's action, and he has got a very good fastball. Now, this is the depth chart I was talking to you guys about. The only change is Keltson out in left field and Chase Davis here at catcher and Sam Morgan now playing first base. Those are the only changes for the depth chart in today's action. So I did want to mention that to you guys uh, so you guys knew who was playing in this game number three. But we see that Brown is going to get out of this inning with nothing hurt, nothing harmed. Jay Balmer going to go the other way. He's going to fly out to right field. Here's Sam Morgan going to go to the same spot pretty much except a little bit further a little bit further on that warning track nothing doing nothing doing so let's go to the third inning brown still out there doing his thing and kelson gonna be going to the warning track to the wall gonna make this play so he's already got two opportunities out there so far here's a base hit by cotter cotter the dh gavin cotter i forgot to mention that name too that's a new name you guys haven't seen yet the freshman Coming up big time for his first base hit. And honestly, that, that was a pretty good shot, man. It was like he was sending the message to the pitcher. He's like, you better watch out, man. Don't be giving me that same pitch. I'll take your head off. Here's Hyde coming up, and he is going to fly out to right fielder. We got a little bit going there. Just didn't get it done. So Hyde's starting to struggle here a little bit. Austin makes the play over at third to Sam Morgan. This inning is over. End of the fourth. Let's go to the top of the fifth with two down. Kingston going to ground out to the shortstop. So now we kind of got a little bit of a back and forth here going. Things have kind of slowed down after that first inning. Here's Kelton out there. You got to get on your horse, baby. Go! Makes the catch. Wow, I didn't know that he had that kind of speed. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. Here's Chase Davis. Base hit back up the middle. Pitcher can't handle it. Center fielder tosses it back in. So nice base hit there. Ground ball here to first. Second baseman makes the play, and wow. Wow, hard slide. And able to break up the double play opportunity. Here's Cotter taking this slider on the outside. It's going to actually move the runner up to second base after the pass ball. Full count here, and that two-seam fastball, guys, was so tricky to read. Cotter strikes out, trying to check his swing, guys. So we're going to go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Kingston makes this play here at first. So Ian Brown still pitching very, very well. And ever since the first inning, guys, where we kind of took over the game, 3 nothing, it's been a pitcher's duel. It's been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now we're going to go to the bullpen here as Ian Brown, the lefty, you know, he did a good, he did a, he, he had a good outing. He, he did really well. It went six innings. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that all day from a starting pitcher, get a quality start. Awesome job. So we're going to turn to Lazaro Rodriguez, the other lefty since it's seemingly apparent that Western Kentucky cannot hit left-handed pitching. So we're going to go with Lazaro, and he's going to get two quick outs here, but he will give up a base hit with two down. And, you know, I'm starting to think about James Monroe a little bit here. I'm starting to think that maybe we need his 100-mile-an-hour fastball, his bevy fastball right there. And we're going to get a stolen base on us. So after that base hit, there's a stolen base, and right back to Rodriguez, and he wasn't ready to field his position. He's going to make a bad throw to Morgan, but he was going to be safe anyway, guys. Watch this one more time. Look at it. Wasn't even close. Wasn't even ready. So we're going to take him out. we got runners on the corners here, and Cole Arbuckle comes on out, and he's a lefty, and he's going to get the job done. So Austin makes the play in foul territory, and we are done with the seventh inning. Let's go to the top of the eighth. Kingston going to hit a little ground ball right. Oh, he missed the tag. The umpire didn't call him out, so he gets into first safely. And guys, Sam Morgan continues to hit. We are testing the arm of the right fielder who's got a gun, apparently. Oh, I hate that graphic. I hate that graphic. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Because guess what, guys? I thought he was closer to third base than he was. But here's the thing. You saw Brady Whiting coming up, getting this double. And we're trying for home. We're trying for home. He's going to slide in safely. That's Sam Morgan. And Whiting is getting the call here, guys, because... Chase Davis got hurt. He got hurt somehow 
in this game. So he's going to be out for about three to four weeks. We get a double here. And we're trying to score, trying to push it. And we're going to get tossed out. We're going to be thrown out off a very good throw. Balmer testing his arm out to first base. Runner gets in safely. Arbuckle's still out here. 4 nothing game. And that 89 mile an hour fastball is just going to nip the low part of the plate here. And Garcia can't get to this base hit. Hyde coming in. Gets it over to third. So it stops the runner from moving to over to third. But Arbuckle's getting a little tired now, so now we are actually going to go to James Monroe. He did not get any action in that second game that we simulated, so he is ready to go. Remember, guys, he had that kind of a longer outing in the very first game of the series, so the stamina was a little bit concerning to me. But Balmer comes up huge with a great defensive play there to get there. But watch this. This baseball is just hanging in the air off that ground ball. And <laughs> Reggie Garcia with the throw over to first base and the stretch by Morgan unreal guys it's a really tough play to make it's a really tough play to make and when the ball hit the ground the runners at full speed you're just waiting for it to come back to you and you got to like prep yourself and get ready to throw over to first to get that out to give yourself a chance so we get a stolen base here by Hyde now Reggie Garcia got that base hit but Hyde got safe on a fielder's choice we were trying to get that base back through the stolen base attempt he did but Austin's going to strike out Two quick outs here for James Monroe. So we get a base hit out here to center field. Two down in the bottom of the ninth, up four to nothing. 0 oh, 2 count. What is Monroe going to throw? He's going to throw that fastball over to Kingston. Makes the nice toss over to first. Guys, we are winners for three straight games over the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. That is, in other words, a sweep for your UAB Blazers. Awesome job hitting, great job pitching. Take a look at the box score. Reggie Garcia went four for five. So he was obviously the notable player of today's game. Sam Morgan still killing it, hitting 364 right now. He went two for four with two RBIs. And that really sucks, though, for Chase Davis because he's just started to come around a little bit. But Brady Whitting, I, I think that's good. I think that's a good performance for him to get that one for one, to get that first hit out of the way. So good things for him. Ian Brown gets the W, went six innings, two strikeouts, no earned, no walks. Good. Good stuff. But Chase Davis hurt for two to three weeks. We're playing Pepperdine, and Josh Austin's now hurt too. So our starting third baseman is down. We have a challenge on the books here. We get a free glove. <laughs> we get level one glove sponsorship challenge if we get a W against Pepperdine. And we did in the very last game of the series. Check it out. Check out that sweet leather, that sweet tan leather. I like it. I love it. I want more of it. So, guys, a little recruiting update here for you guys. We're looking at Hubert Brabender. <laughs> okay, interesting name. Or maybe is it Brabender? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him Brabender. Hubert Brabender. I like it. I like it. Brian Geelan. A catcher slash DH, this is something that we need to focus on as a young catcher. 65 overall right now, ranked 208. He's got good attitude. He's got excellent with his grades, with his academics. I like this guy. So that's a little recruiting update for that week. Ended up losing the series against Washington State. Northwestern, we win 12-3, and then we also win a close one 3-1. Guys, we're pulling back within 500. We're 13-17 and 17 right now. And we're currently in fifth place and only a game and a half back from first place in Conference USA. So we're doing we're doing pretty decent. This is this is a Conference USA that's not stacked. We could we could make some movement here in this conference. But Brian Geeland looks like he's really considering UAB. So I'm putting a lot of points on him, trying to get him committed. We need to start committing some of these players because I, I want to get that out of the way. A guy like Hubert Brabender at a 78. Rank 31, he's starting to come around a little bit. Gabe Guerra as well. This is another guy that I think that I really want to go after. Third base, left field. Robbie Weigel, another catcher that we want to consider trying to grab as well. And I think we can nab these guys in the next episode. I really do. I really do. So we're still under 500. We're in fifth place in the Conference USA, but we're going to go up against Rice in the next episode. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that red button for a subscribe. See you guys then. As always, 
Peace.